Hello everyone, I'm Sam. I'm going to be giving a talk about space careers and some of the skills you need to get into it. Um, a little bit about me before going forward. Um, I'm currently an aerospace engineering student at the University of Leicester, and I do volunteer with the UK SETS as well. So the biggest question before we get into this, why I work for the space industry? Um, the first and most important point is that it's so rap it's rapidly growing. Um, five years ago, there weren't really many organizations, but now there are tons and tons of space startups and different ty types of jobs and even different types of missions. So it's really growing rapidly. And that would be an interesting point to consider when um, working for the wanting to work for the space industry. Um, there's so many types of jobs, like I said, whatever you like, you can find a role for it in the space industry. Um, the other cool thing is that it's so innovative. There's always something so new and um, each day is different. There might be a new discovery or you might be a part of something that's being done for the first time ever, things like that. It's a very, it's a highly inclusive and diverse place. You will meet people from all kinds of uh, backgrounds, countries, um, um, because there's so many collaborations that happen in projects. Um, that's how the field is really diverse and it's a great way to get to know people in the world as well. Because it is such a um, sort of technically important domain, um, it does also have a high, higher pay compared to most other roles. Um, it is an important sector because you'd be playing an important role. Um, you get to be a part of learning about the future of humanity. Will we go to Mars? Are we going to stay on Earth forever? Things like that. And yeah, maybe you might get to be friends with aliens. So a myth buster before we go ahead. All space or space roles are technical. I don't like math or science, so I can't enter the space industry, even though I enjoy reading about space. This is completely wrong. No matter what you, you're interested in, you can definitely find a role um, within the space industry. For example, say you like photography, there's space photography. Say you like reading law, there's space law. Um, so it goes on and on. Even if you enjoy planting plants, you could be a space farmer or a um, botanist studying if you can grow plants on Mars. So yeah, this is not correct. <clears throat> Here are some of the roles that might be of interest to you. I've tried to include as many diverse roles as possible, but as you can see, there are so many different kinds of roles that you could be uh, a part of. Um, you could get into the entrepreneurship side, be a business analyst of different kinds, of, uh, comparing different kinds of space space organizations. You could be a spacecraft operator. You could be an astronaut. You could be a project manager. Um, you could be a space photographer, even a spacesuit designer. There's so many different kinds of roles coming up. Um, as I said, the field is going, growing so rapidly, and hence we have so many new roles coming up, which is great. Um, some skills that are, that are a must-have, not just in the space industry, but any industry you want to go to, um, communication is very, very important. Um, just being aware of what's happening and communicating that between the people you're working with yourself um, is very important because that's how you know what you're doing and how to go forward. And teamwork, of course, is really, really important because like I mentioned, there are so many collaborations that you do. You work with so many different teams. Even if you work in a business role, you'll have to speak with people from the technical teams, from the procurement team. Um, so yeah, being able to do that um, is really important. And leadership, um, I want to specifically say that doesn't only pertain to leading a team, but it could also be about how you lead yourself in a team, uh, how you organize things, how you plan things, how you execute them, process them, things like that um, can really be additive to the leadership skill. Um, critical thinking is also very important, just being able to receive the data that you're uh, getting and um, being able to think about it, process it, and uh, give the required outcome that's needed for the team. 
Um, and that also ties in with being observant and being detail oriented, just being able to spot the little things that might make a difference. And then again, people skills, just being able to talk to people, different kinds of people. Um, you might meet people that are really easy to talk to, some maybe a little bit difficult to, so you must sort of be adaptive when it comes to working with the team, working with projects and things like that. So these are sort of the skills that I think that are a must have or uh, definitely worth working on to ensure that you have a good impact on the team that you're working in or wish to work in. Um, to go a little bit more deeper into the skills, I've sort of divided them into technical and non-technical. Um, so as I mentioned before, there's so many different kinds of roles. And um, as the Mythbuster said, not all space roles are technical. In fact, most of them are non-technical. Um, so so um, going by that, if you're interested in sort of the technical side, I would strongly recommend that you learn a bit about the hardware and software entities of a project. Um, and a great way of doing that is to just set aside some time, look at some Arduino projects that you can do by yourself. Um, the, the Arduino kits are available online. And um, if you have a robotics club at your school or a STEM club, please, please be engaged with them. They're, they would be the best way of um, getting engaged with the STEM field, not only do they have the resources, but they also have the knowledge that will help guide you. Um, you know, if let's say you wanna work on something, say build, build a remote control car, um, you've, got the, you've got the lab, you've got robotic kits available through the school, and most importantly, you have your teachers there who will be able to help you out. Um, beyond that, I would say, uh, definitely look up student competitions, national or international, just, just be on Google as much as you can, looking for opportunities. That's how you're going to gain some experience. And the more experience you gain, the more you learn about what kind of role you like and what kind of roles you will be best at by using the best of your abilities. And going to the, oh, another point to add, um, with either roles, really, reading could be a very essential uh, way of learning knowledge, um, even reading or just speaking with people. Just going on LinkedIn and um, if you see a role that you're interested in and someone's doing it, have a chat with them. There's so many people out there who would love to talk about what they do and how they got there. And I think that's one of the most important ways of understanding how to get a role that you really want. Um, not only do you get to see how they've progressed through their careers and their career stages to get to the role that you might be interested in, but you also get to talk to them and understand uh, you know, what kind of things they deal with and if that is of interest to you and just, you know, get a deeper understanding of what the role really is. Going to the non-technical side, there are so many roles. Like I said, majority of the space industry it are, has roles that are non-technical. Um, things like team management, um, business and HR. Um, like I said, name any role, you will be able to do that in the space industry. Coming to uh, team management, if that's something you're really interested in and you have a passion for, for space science, um, learning about um, online workspaces could be essential because a lot of these projects, um, they, have, they have platforms where they share their work and you might be the person who deals with that. So learning about how to do them and the different methodologies that are implemented in a project such as Agile or Waterfall um, might be might be of might be something to look into if that's the sort of thing you're interested in. Um, and you know sometimes there are team leaders who aren't from a technical background, but they make a huge importance to the team by just knowing how to how to find information, pass it on to the relevant members, process it and get it back to whoever whoever needs it next and piecing it together. All of that is equally important as any technical role because that's how you bring a project together and make it work. Um, and of course, there are business roles as well, things where you learn about competitors or do business analysis, procurement, where you have meetings with other companies, look at business ac acquisitions, things like that. If that's what you're into, um, then again, that's the path that you would be interested in. And I strongly recommend um, looking at job adverts whenever you can, 
just Google, like I said, uh, use LinkedIn or many job advert places. Um, if there's a role you're interested in, you can just Google it and um, find out what's required for the role. And maybe that will help help you understand what you need to do, what you need to study, what kind of skills you need to have. Sometimes there are roles that need very specific skills. Let's say there's a technical role that needs you to be quite proficient in Python. Um, if you're in high school and deciding what classes to take for A-levels, that would be a great way to incorporate it into your study and um, focus on that if that's the role that you really want. And now you have the requirements and exact things that they're looking for. It's, a, it's the best way to really learn um, how to achieve what you want, the, the role that you want. Yeah, LinkedIn is a great place to learn about roles, learn about career practices and um, job adverts, best way really. Um, so how can you know which role is the right one for you? I'll be honest, that's a difficult one. The best way to really know that is to try out different roles. Um, first and foremost, be self-aware and um, be aware of your interests and your hobbies and uh, try out different things, you know, join a STEM club, try out the different uh, subjects they have, different projects they have, take part in, in, uh, in national competitions, um, try out different roles. Working in teams in those competitions itself could be a vital insight to you by knowing what kind of work that you like. Maybe you like more of the management side, maybe you like a very technical role, maybe you like the research role. So, um, Taking on those different roles in team projects would be very, very important and highly um, insightful. Take personality quizzes. They may or may not help, um, but there's one on spacecareers.co.uk that is pretty good. Um, and yeah, um, take part in STEM events, competitions. There are so many conferences as well that I would recommend you look into. Um, meeting people there, learning about roles, learning, ab learning about com companies and their visions might really help. Reach out to people who've already been through this. Um, if you have, if you know that you want to go into the space industry, but you don't know which role, or you're debating between two kinds of field, um, speak to someone who's done it. And yeah, that's the great way to do it. There are loads of online courses that you could take a look at. Um, take uh, loads of free ones as well. Um, doing them, you'll know what a certain topic entails and the, the, the sort of task that could be involved with it. Um, attend loads of webinars, there are so many going on. Um, so yeah, please take a look at those. How to plan a path towards a career in the space industry. Like I said, the first and foremost thing is to know what you're interested in and the kind of role that you wanna go into. That will really help set out a plan or set out an area of um, subjects that you're interested in. And definitely do take those subjects at GCSE and A levels and build on them. Um, and look at look at universities, look at their um, look at their course details, look at what you study each year, learn a little bit about those modules. Maybe that will help you decide maybe this course is better than this, such as. Um, I know I was debating between astrophysics and aerospace engineering, and the thing that helped me make the de decision was um, the fact that I liked hands-on projects rather than research. So things like that, just take a deeper look into the course material, course detail details, things like that. You can also contact the university and request to speak with the lecturer at times, and that could be a great way to do it. And like I said, competitions are the best way to know what you might be interested in. Um, and there are loads of opportunities now, especially with the space apprenticeships coming up. That could be another option for you. Um, yeah, depends on what you want to do and the best path to get there. And yeah, Googling is the best way to understand all of that. Here are some space organizations that might be of interest to you. Um, um, choosing a place that you want to work for and building your resume towards it is important, understanding what they do, understanding the projects they take on, their vision, um, what motivates them is really important. Say you're passionate about a company um, and you want to go there, you, you try to structure your applications towards that. Make sure you, when you apply, 
um, you know the company in and out because that that is how you stand out. And um, yeah, the more you're aware about the space industry, the more you'll know about what kind of topics or projects interest you. So that's another way of knowing what you want to do. Check out these websites, Airbus, Talus, Elena, any of them. Look at look at their projects, look at their newsletters. Maybe there's a topic that catches your attention. Maybe that's the kind of project you want to work on. So that's another way to go about it. A little bit about my personal path. Um, so high school, I actually did not study um, a, a, a physics kind of role um, because I studied in America. It wasn't a necessity to study physics to go to, to study physics at university. So I actually did synthetic biology. So it's never too late to change. Um, I just did a foundation course for about six months. I just took physics and I was able to um, study aerospace engineering here. So um, it's okay if you realize what you really want to do later on. That's the whole point. You try out different things. You truly understand what works best and what you're really good at. And um, yeah, make sure you truly, I would say high school is when you figure out what kind of things you're interested in and university is sort of where you go in depth and figure uh, what kind of roles you might be interested in um, and extracurriculars are the best way to do that like I said and um, definitely definitely do a placement year um, I'll be starting my placement with Airbus this July and I, I could not be happier it could not be more happier um, I did do a lot of extracurricular activities that sort of led me to that um, UK says runs national competitions I'm leading my the university's team in the Olymp Olympus March Rover Trials. And I also take part in Formula Student. So things like that, just when you see an opportunity, make sure that you take it and make the best out, make the best use of it. And yeah, these are some of the competitions that, that UK says hosts. Um, if they're of interest to you, they really do allow, allow you to get a deeper insight about the kind of roles that you might like, the kind of tasks that you might like. So yeah, definitely take a look at those and um, definitely go on to spacecareers.uk and they have a couple of quizzes that might help out. They also have job profiles um, where say you're interested in a role and they give you a profile of the job, what kind of uh, skills you might need. So definitely take a look at that. Hopefully that will help. And that brings us to the end of my talk. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, do feel free to reach out to me or UK Sets. And yeah, good luck for your future. And I hope you get the roles that you dream of. Never stop dreaming and never stop questioning.